Valve does not care about CSGO. It only cares about skins and money. It gives way too much attention to Dota and treats CSGO like a bastard child. The hackers are running rampant and VAC is useless. Valve actually promotes cheating. The more people cheat, the more it can ban them, which means the cheaters will be forced to buy the game again, which means Valve will get more money. And even though now Valve has made CSGO a free-to-play game and that money grab logic is not valid anymore, they want to continue getting people to make new CS accounts so that they can show that CSGO still has the highest concurrent players. I am the best. Anyone better than me is a cheater. <laughs>
This is where companies like ESCA and Faceit come in. These premium CSGO services like ESCA and Faceit, aside from providing 128x servers, also claim to give the players a cheater-free experience and environment. These are also the companies that work closely along with tournament organizers to build the pro scene of CSGO. ESCA in particular really prides itself in its anti-cheat and they claim to be the industry leader in anti-cheating software. That's like their main selling point. They describe that the latest generation of cheats are designed similarly to malware and they gain an advantage when loading before the anti-cheat tools. There are some cheats which you can buy off the internet for as less as $20. And while ESCA engages in a constant battle to shut those down, over time, the cheating industry itself has evolved to such an extent that today, there are more sophisticated and advanced hardware cheats that can cost anywhere between $1,500 to $5,000. Now, that's a lot of money. And that's the level of cheats that some professional players have been caught using in the past. Phenomenally for their side. I can't believe what I'm witnessing right here. Oh, wow! Kelly! Get out Kelly! of here! Get Can out you of here! Can believe it? By the way, if you did not know, we have a video on our channel about the biggest cheating scandals in CSGO. So check that out too if you want. Like I said, it's a constant game of cat and mouse. Cheat developers keep tinkering, keep tweaking, and the anti-cheat developers too are forced to play their hand. B5, the anti-cheat that caught Forsaken. So strong, ESCA, face it, and plenty more. All these are anti-cheats that take a more active and aggressive approach, monitoring the activity around Counter-Strike similar to a publicly available antivirus software. But they need to be careful while doing so, because at that point, you're on a slippery slope where you need to take privacy concerns into consideration. The legal repercussions around privacy issues are a major factor that technology companies need to address. Otherwise, you're gonna get in trouble, like this fellow right here. We don't exactly have the, the strongest reputation on privacy right now, to put it lightly. Prashant Prabhakar, the co-founder of SoStrong, that's a CSGO platform, explains to us that a lot of anti-cheats work at the kernel level of coding. For those of you who don't know what the kernel level is, think of it as a level that's really close to your hardware. Almost like the BIOS. If this is your hardware, the kernel level of coding is somewhere over here. There's a few other levels. And then there's the operating system. And then there are the apps that we use. Most of the users will only think about the apps and the operating system itself without knowing much about the kernel level. That's why the anti-cheat developers need to be super careful when they are using the kernel level of coding. Because if something goes wrong or something messes up, they risk frying the computers of the users. And since it's so close to the BIOS, they have to get verified and seek permission from Microsoft every time they want to roll out an update. Similarly, since it pertains to CSGO, they have to seek permissions from Valve as well every time they update their anti-cheat. Otherwise, CSGO will think that this anti-cheat software itself is a cheat. So they need to work in tandem with both Microsoft and Valve at the same time because it poses a lot of privacy and security threats. Basically, there's a lot of guidelines that these guys need to follow. ESCA themselves have to specifically mention on their website, we deploy strict protocols and have worked with privacy and security experts to make sure that your data remains private. They have to keep sending out messages like these on their websites to assure the users that they are in safe hands. These private anti-cheat companies, by the virtue of being a smaller company when compared to Valve, and by the virtue of being geo-focused, don't have to go through as many guidelines as Valve does. And since Valve is present all around the globe, it needs to consider the legal sets in every country instead of just the place where it is based out of. Prashant says that Valve WAC software is not as intrusive as the other anti-cheats. The WAC software does not go as deep as the kernel level. And maybe that's why the other anti-cheats might be more effective than WAC, and they are more effective because they take that aggressive and intrusive approach. Valve does not want to take that aggressive approach at all because they don't want to risk getting into privacy concern troubles. They would much rather have a bunch of people complaining about hackers than face a million dollar lawsuit about breach of privacy. Valve has a different approach to solving this problem. Valve programmer John McDonald spoke at the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco about how he and Valve use deep learning techniques to address CSGO's cheating problem. 
Valve are developing Wagnet, a new additional system that uses deep learning to analyze players' in-game behavior, learn what the cheats look like, and then spot and ban hackers based on a dynamic criteria. Valve decided to target aimbots first because they present themselves at specific, easily definable points during the rounds of CSGO, that is, when you're shooting. This allowed Valve to build a system that captured the changes in the player's aim on an X and Y axis. It measures the change in degrees of player's perspective, half a second before a shot and a quarter second after the shot. Uh, but uh, you're a cheat developer and you're like, aha, all I need to do is uh, make my cheat look cheaty three quarters of a second before a uh, shot and then look totally normal through the half second and then uh, get the kill and then move on. Now, I think that's extremely improbable in the first place, but it actually won't work anyways for two reasons. And one is that human jurors will just be like, yeah, dude, I don't care, that looks cheaty. Like, boop, conviction. And then uh, the learner will retrain and it'll be like, I don't know why locking on in this particular way is considered to be cheaty to humans, but in order for me to do the best job I can do, I need to label that as cheaty. So it will just learn the thing. This data, along with other pieces of information like what weapon is the player using, their distance from the target, and the result of the shot, whether it hit, it missed, or it was a headshot, these individual data particles together form what Valve calls atoms. Essentially, a data package that describes each shot. Millions of such atoms are fed into the CSGO's deep learning system. Wacknet works alongside Overwatch, CSGO's player-operated replay tool for evaluating players who have been reported for bad behavior. Deep learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence, all these are new interesting phenomenons in the tech world that's got everybody talking. To explain deep learning in simpler words, think of it as a system that continuously teaches itself and evolves over time. Think of humans trying to learn something new, a new language, a new instrument, maybe you're studying something, maybe you're making art, whatever it is, the more you practice, the better you get at it. Even in CSGO, the more you play, the better you get. And at one point, if you understand the game well enough, you will be able to figure out whether a player is hacking or not just by looking at his gameplay. And that's how deep learning works too. It relies on Overwatch data. If a bunch of people in Overwatch are convinced that a person is cheating, they deem them guilty. So Wacknet takes into account all these tons and tons of data. And if it sees a pattern of gameplay that has been marked as cheaty by the people in Overwatch, it will take a note of that. And if it sees a similar pattern of gameplay next time, now it knows that this is cheating and it will ban the user. In simple words, it learns by observing and looking out for patterns. That's what deep learning is good at. Humans teach it the pattern and once it has learned that pattern, it can automatically start dishing out bans. Okay class, A for Apple, B for Unlike other anti-cheat systems that try to scan the files around Counter-Strike to look for external assistance, Wagnet looks directly at the gameplay just like any experienced human player would by learning the game, and it does so with the help of data it collects from Overwatch. Both players and Wagnet report players for judgment and Overwatch, but when Wagnet reports a suspected cheater, they are almost always a cheater. But obviously, before Wacknet becomes truly devastating and it roots out all possible hackers, it will need some time to learn and perfect itself. While a lot of players are still waiting for Valve to improve its anti-cheat system, a teenager from UK who goes online by the name of Two Eggs has single-handedly developed an anti-cheat tool called Hestianet. The system reviews the footage, analyzes the data, and gives out a verdict whether it's guilty or not and then it stores the user's Steam ID in a database, which is reviewed occasionally to check for game bans or whack bans. If a ban is handed out, Hestianet makes a note of it, and adding that information from that specific verdict to her network pool to increase her overall accuracy. Hestianet teaches itself, it convicts people, and then it checks whether the people actually get banned or not, and once they do, Hestianet realizes that she is accurate, and hence it improves. The system's accuracy is on point because so far, 
out of the 14,782 cases reviewed by it, 14,515 have been penalized with a ban, giving it a success rate of 98.19%. To conclude, even though private anti-cheats might catch more hackers right now by taking a more aggressive approach, the efforts to develop new AI system to detect hackers is where the future lies. So the best that we can do to help this is to do our duty by pressing the report button whenever we see a hacker. But let's not report everyone that one taps you.